So everything you knew about everything had potential sucking is 100% wrong. I have found the real reasons why Ten Hag won't be sacked anytime soon. So in normal situations, this would be a tough time for any Manchester United manager. Like a really, really tough time for, for the manager. And what is the situation at Manchester United now? So Manchester United were kicked out of the Champions League and they couldn't even make it to, to the Europa League. They are far behind Premier League leaders, Liverpool, by 10 points. And just last weekend, they had one of their most humiliating home defeats in years against Bournemouth, where they lost by three goals to zero at home. To add to that, only three teams in Europe's big five leagues have lost more games than Manchester United this season. And the teams are Union Berlin, Burnley and Almeria. Even though Eric Ten Hag is definitely under intense pressure, it doesn't necessarily mean he's, he's on the verge of getting sacked. In this video, I am diving into why sacking Ten Hag wouldn't be a straightforward call. Ever since the Glazer family announced a review last November, Manchester United has been all over the place. I mean, they have been in a total mess. Sir Jim Ratcliffe, founder of INEOS, that's like a petrochemical giant, agreed a deal to buy 25% of the club. Supposedly, he is going to take over controls over of how things run on the football side. That's like the football department of Manchester United. But wait, the deal is still waiting for the final approval. That is the final signature from the six Glazer siblings. Now, normally, decisions about the manager would get the go-ahead from Joel Glazer, that the big boss of the Glazers, and the and the bosses in Manchester would handle it. But with Radcliffe and his crew waiting, it's like nobody's really in charge at Manchester United. Like Manchester United don't have a boss now. So Richard Arnold, the old CEO, got us also got replaced by Patrick Stewart on a temporary basis. But come on, you don't expect a temporary CEO to fire the manager after just one month in charge of Manchester United. It's almost impossible. You could argue that the current football department led by John Metoff do not have the, capa the capacity and the capability to, to sack the hack since they are about to hand over control to their INUOS folks. And let's not forget, the hack was appointed by a, a Metoff over 18 months ago. So Metoff has got some backing and belief in Eric Ten Hag, the Dutchman, that the Dutchman will do well when he's given more time. So is it too expensive to sack Ten Hag now? Eric Ten Hag has over 18 months left on his three year contract. And if the club decides to sack him now, they will have to pay like a huge compensation fee. Financially, it's a tricky situation for United because uh, United are currently facing financial challenges with, with their cash reserves dropping to 76 million pounds and only 40 million pounds left on their credit facility to use now. Ten Hag earns 9 million pounds yearly and Ten Hag will cost the club over around 15 million pounds in compensation and this amount does not include potential payouts to uh, his assistants like um, his assistant coaches like Michel van der Gag and Steve McLaren who joined Manchester United when Ten Hag was appointed as the manager of Manchester United. So, to put this in context, when Jose Mourinho left five years ago, United paid approximately 19 million pounds in compensation to uh, Jose Mourinho and his backroom and his backroom staff. Sacking a manager isn't just about compensation. There's also the trouble of finding and hiring a, a competent replacement. Manchester United is being careful about sticking to financial fair play rules, especially since they have used a lot and have spent a lot in the past. So letting go of a manager and hiring a new one could make their financial situation a bit worse. So how is the vibe in the dressing room like, if you ask me? So back in November, 
right after United lost 3-0 to uh, Newcastle. There were rumours around that uh, the players were having a growing sense of unease and uh, among the squad. Some players were starting to lose faith in Ten Hag's uh, methods and, and what Ten Hag has to offer Man United. So there's been some eyebrow raising decisions like freezing out World Cup uh, winning defender uh, Rafael Varane. And some of the players thought sending 73 million pounds England forward Jadon Sancho to the sidelines could have been handled with a bit more fitness and a bit more control. Then there's the manager's comment about about wanting United to play more football when he sat off a uh, senior senior man uh, uh, Casemiro at halftime against Brentford this season. Now Ten Hag isn't exactly friends with uh, with many players in the camp, and this lack of charisma is seen as a problem in camp too, and uh, in how he deals with the squad from day to day uh, at Manchester United. But despite some grumbling in certain corners of United's uh, dressing room, it is not a total uh, or a full blown issue just yet. With all the uncertainty in the ownership department and the idea that nobody is going, is going to suck Ten Hag yet until Jim Radcliffe's crew shows up, it's probably the worst time for players to try to, to, to be trying to suck or oust the manager. Can results keep going? Ten Hag is fully aware that in football, it's all about the results. And let's be honest here, this season has been a bit of a disaster. The club isn't actively thinking about replacing, replacing him, but it's giving off some vibes similar to when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was, uh, was the manager at Manchester and how he got sad. So far, Ten Hag has seen seven losses in 16 Premier League games this season, winning the other nine. Their run in Europe wasn't much better, dead last in the Champions League group, and so no Europa League in 2024. And remember, their Carabao Cup reign lasted a grand total of two games before Newcastle sent them packing at Old Trafford. Now, the funny twist in Ten Hag's situation is that it's just a week ago that he won uh, the Premier League, uh, the Premier, Premier League's best manager of the month. But United won three top flight matches in November without considering a goal. Even when United was down 3-0 at home to Bournemouth, a chunk of a chunk of Old Trafford was still chanting Eric Ten Hag's red and white army. And it's worth noting that while players go booed after the final whistle, he got some applause. Tuesday evening against Bayern Munich had a similar vibe too. So frustration seems more aimed at the squad than the manager himself. But now that they are out of the Champions League and they are facing tough game and against their bitter rivals and current Premier League leaders Liverpool this weekend, the mood could switch real quick. So finally, it's my United scouting for new managers. Zinedine Zidane, Antonio Conte and Hansi Flick are top coaches currently without a job. And there are names like Graham Potter and Julian Lopetegui with Premier League experience. But, the, but here's the reality. Those in the club say United, uh, United hasn't really started searching for a manager yet. So Ten Hag has got a bit of a lifeline though. Beyond having support from the club uh, and from the higher ups of the club, they seem, uh, they seem hesitant, maybe even powerless to, uh, to switch GS and give him the sack. Now, now his future might come under, under the microscope once the uh, Jim, Jim Radcliffe crew take over. And until then, he seems to be standing on pretty solid ground.